It was a beautiful clear day in the spring of 1974 when the residents of the Alaska panhandle town of Siska awoke to a surprise. 3,400 foot Mount Edgecombe towering over the city was belching thick black smoke. While Mount Edgecombe was known to be a volcano, it had last erupted some 3,000 years before and was long thought to have been dormant. Panic calls went into authorities, including the local Coast Guard station, which immediately dispatched a helicopter to go check out this new volcanic activity that was threatening the city. As the helicopter came over the summit, the Coast Guardsmen inside were shocked to see down inside the crater of Mount Edgecombe a large pile of burning tires and spray-painted in the snow in 50-foot tall letters the words, April Fools. The eruption of Mount Edgecombe, the work of a colorful local man named Porky Bicker, is often included among lists of the greatest April Fool's Day pranks of all times. But it does raise an interesting question. When did this tradition of pulling pranks on April the 1st begin? And it being now April the 2nd, we can answer with no fooling around. Now you might have imagined that this facetious faux holiday was a relatively modern invention. But the joke is actually much older than you might have thought. It is history that deserves to be remembered. According to the 7th century Greek monk Maximus the Confessor, in ancient Rome, Hilaria represented any time of celebration or rejoicing, a celebration that might include, say, a marriage or the birth of a child. But Hilaria also represented a festival that honored Sibylle, the mother of gods. It's difficult to say if the holiday, whose name literally means cheery or merry, and which was derived from a previous Greek celebration and, by some accounts, an even earlier Egyptian celebration, was the inspiration for the modern tradition of pranking. But the celebration did occur at the time of the vernal equinox, which represented rebirth and was immediately before the calends of April, and at least in imperial times, included games and amusements and shenanigans such as dressing in disguise. The festival of Hilaria says that a day that was set aside to have amusements around the beginning of spring is an idea that's as old as civilization itself, but it's not really clear whether or how that transformed into the modern tradition of April Fools. The tradition, though, especially the part of dressing in disguise, which at one point became the focus of an assassination plot against Emperor Commodus, is surprisingly similar to a little understood medieval liturgical tradition called the Feast of Fools. On this feast day, lower-level clergy would masquerade as senior clergy and hold masses that would mock church traditions. The exact purpose of the festival isn't clear, and the practice was officially banned in 1431, but still the tradition might have been difficult to eradicate, and might have been the inspiration for the celebration described in Victor Hugo's 1831 novel, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, set in 1482. However, the Feast of Fools was traditionally celebrated in January, not April. However, that gives rise to another popular but unproven theory that the tradition dates to the 1434 Edict of Roussillon, in which King Charles IX officially made January the 1st the starting of the new year in France, which previously had been recognized at different dates throughout the kingdom. But in some cases, with a festival that was held between March 25th and April 1st. As some of the king either did not get the word or refused to recognize the new date, they were mocked as fools. Thus, the Feast of Fools, which used to be held in January, now the date of the new New Year, was moved to April, the date of the old New Year, and became a way to mock people who clung to outdated traditions. However, that explanation has flaws. First, it doesn't explain how the tradition came to be celebrated elsewhere, as other countries didn't change the date of the New Year at the same time. And second, some theories place their tradition much farther back than the 16th century. According to the website Info Please, Joseph Boskin, a professor of history at Boston University, offered a possible explanation in 1983. Boskin argued that the April Fool's tradition dated specifically to the reign of the 4th century Roman Emperor Constantine the Great. The story, Boskin surmised, came from a discussion between Constantine and a court jester named Kugel, where Kugel insisted that he could run the empire better than the emperor. To test the theory, Constantine made Kugel emperor for a day. April 1st, the New Year, on the Roman calendar. Kugel then passed an edict calling for absurdity that day, and the edict was so enjoyed that it became an annual tradition. Professor Boskin argues that the April Fool's tradition was tied to the reason that courts had jesters to begin with, the serious business of putting events into perspective through humor. Professor Boskin's new theory was publicized widely by the Associated Press, who apparently took some time to figure out that they had been had by the good professor. The entire thing was made up, itself, an April Fool's prank. And while we no longer have evidence that April Fool's is directly tied to Constantine the Great, it certainly predates Boskin's prank in 1983. 
Some historians tie the tradition to the story of the wise men of Gotham, which has the people of the Nottinghamshire town of Gotham, meaning goat home, in the 12th century pretending to be mad in order to avoid a tax by King John. By engaging in foolish tasks, they convince the royal stewards that the town is crazy, and thus John declines to visit them. April Fools is, some theorize, a tribute to how the men of Gotham were wise by acting like fools. While the story apparently dates back at least to the 15th century and has parallels in other cultures, its actual link to April the 1st is unproven. Another connection might be made to Geoffrey Chaucer's 13th century Canterbury Tales. The tale, The Nun's Priest's Tale, regards a vain rooster and the trickster fox Reynard. At first, the fox tricks the rooster, capturing him, but then the rooster tricks the fox and escapes. Both then chide each other for being fooled by pride. The tale of deception became a popular theme in children's books from the 13th century on, and might itself have been derived from one of Aesop's fables, The Fox and the Crow, whose origins may date back to ancient Greece. Notably, the nun's priest tale says that the story occurs on Sin March Begin 30 Days and 2, or the 32nd day of March, which would be April the 1st. Given that interpretation, the day may again have ancient origins represented in the story that are tied to tricking people who were fooled by their own pride on the first day of April. However, the connection is unclear, and many scholars today assume, based on other cues in the story, that the 32nd of March is likely misprinted, and that the date is intended to be 32 days after the end of March, in early May, rather than on April 1st. At very least, though, the popular perception might have helped to spur the modern tradition and its April 1st date. Even in France, the date may predate the Edict of Roussillon. In 1508, French poet Eloi Demerville wrote a poem that includes a dialogue between Satan and Lucifer plotting evil deeds. The poem includes a line that roughly translates as, The infamous pimp of men and women, April Fish. Poisson d'Avril, or April Fish, is the modern French term for April Fools, although it's not clear that Demerville was referring specifically to April the first, or merely to a, a foolish person. According to the online Museum of Hoaxes, in 1561, the Flemish poet Edouard de Denay published a book of fables that includes a poem entitled, roughly, Refrain on Errand Day, which is the 1st of April, in which a noble man sends a servant on a group of absurd errands on April 1st. The servant seems to recognize the trick, fearing that he has been sent on a fool's errand. The poem suggests the tradition was already well recognized by the time. English antiquarian John Aubrey noted the tradition in a 1687 work on English traditions, noting, Fool's holy day, we observe it on ye 1st of April, and so it is kept in Germany everywhere. The reference confirms that the tradition was well accepted in England by that time. And it was shortly thereafter that we see the first reference to one of the most famous of the English April Fool's jokes. From the 13th century to the 18th century, the Tower of London included a menagerie, animals that had been acquired as royal gifts. The menagerie used to be a significant tourist attraction, and a bastion of the tower, torn down in the 1800s and now in ruins, was called the Lion's Tower, so named after the lions that were supposedly kept there. A letter in a 1698 newspaper references sending people to see the washing of the lions on the 1st of April. The trick involves sending a gullible person to see the ceremony of the washing of the lions, which supposedly involved herding the tower's lions down to the Thames to be washed in the river. It was, of course, a fool's errand, as there was no such ceremony. It was just a popular trick to get someone to come stand around looking stupid. The trick continued and was revived in the 19th century, when pranksters would send engraved invitations or hand them out to visitors. A 1771 entry in the diary of Anna Green Winslow, a member of a prominent Boston family, in which she references her father sending her mother after a supposed flock of wild geese, literally a wild goose chase, on April 1st shows that the practice was well established in America in the 18th century. April Fool's pranks became perhaps easier as people became more trusting of media. On April Fool's 1878, Americans were taken in by a widely publicized story that claimed that Thomas Edison had created a machine that will feed the human race. In the story, Edison was quoted saying to startled reporters that his machine made all sorts of foodstuffs, from dirt taken away from the cellar and water taken from these pipes. Edison was quoted saying, I believe, in fact I know, that in ten years my machine will be used to provide the tables of the civilized world. Meat will no longer be killed and vegetables will no longer be grown, except by savages. 
As to details, Edison apparently demurred, saying that he was applying for several patents, but did reveal that I form all my meat compounds by exposing three elements in a red-hot state to nitrogen gas. Despite the article becoming increasingly absurd, and in the end concluding that the machine would cost perhaps five or six dollars, enough people were taken in by the hoax that Edison received a flood of letters. The Santa Barbara Press was taken in and appalled, opining that the device would create laziness and thus would produce damnation, obliteration, and annihilation of race, if anything would. Edison himself congratulated the editor who originated the story, calling the prank very ingenious. If you think that people would have become more aware as time moves on, well, maybe not. In another famous prank on April Fool's Day, 1957, the very serious BBC series Panorama took in at least hundreds of viewers with the story of residents of a Swiss town having a bountiful spaghetti harvest owing to a mild winter and the virtual disappearance of the spaghetti weevil. When hundreds of viewers called to see how they too could grow their own spaghetti, the BBC reportedly told them to put a sprig of spaghetti in a tin of tomato sauce and hope for the best. Of course, pranks continue. If anything, they become more common in the digital age. And there are detractors for the tradition, people who argue that it's mean-spirited to pull the pranks. And of course, it can cause confusion if actual news occurs on April the 1st. And it can also be dangerous. A prank in 1980 that was very similar to Porky Bicker's Alaska Volcano prank, in which a local news station reported that the 600-foot-tall Great Blue Hill in Milton, Massachusetts was erupting led to a general panic and resulted in the firing of the station manager. And while there's no real agreement over exactly how April Fool's Day started, it is surprisingly ubiquitous. It's celebrated throughout the world, although traditions differ. For example, in the United Kingdom, the pranks are supposed to be done before noon. Anyone who pulls a prank after noon is considered themselves to be the April Fool. And in many Spanish-speaking countries, the very similar Holy Innocence Day is celebrated, but not on April 1st, but instead at the end of December. Alex Bose, who's the curator of the online Museum of Hoaxes, theorizes that the reason it's so ubiquitous is because so many cultures had spring festivals, things he calls renewal days, that included some sort of organized mayhem, often the wearing of costumes, and that played an important role. The, the, the social order is temporarily challenged, but it's restored, showing the stability of society, in the same way that winter challenges life, only to have the circle of life restored with spring which begins apparently on April 2nd. Happy Renewal Day. I hope you enjoyed this episode of The History Guy, short snippets of forgotten history between 10 and 15 minutes long. And if you did enjoy, please go ahead and click that thumbs up button. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions for future episodes, please write those in the comment section. I will be happy to personally respond. Be sure to follow The History Guy on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and check out our merchandise on teespring.com. And if you'd like more episodes on forgotten history, all you need to do is subscribe.